Wow, I'm not sure I can top that. Um, and I will it's have to. It's all true. Well, I'm going to have to thank you, Shelley, and certainly thank John Dillon when I see him. You know, um, when I became the CEO of DuPont, and I live in a small town, and you'd run into people in the supermarket who would say, the CEO actually goes to the supermarket. They never asked the question the day before. But the interesting part was the questions from the people in the community. I grew up in that community, and they knew me for a long time. They said, so how does it feel? And the only word I could come up with was humbling. It is a 212-year-old institution that has made invention and scientific inquiry and delivering that into the marketplace its hallmark. And taking that into this century and delivering on it in a very different world in the midst of the global financial crisis. So, you know, thank you, Shelley, and to John Dillon. They've both been uh, mentors. They've both been uh, provokers, as are many of the people that I, I hold dear to me. Um, I want to thank, first of all, my colleagues here at DuPont and our partners that are here with us tonight. Uh, the only way you can lead a company that is of this size um, is with a diverse team that you trust, that can tug and pull at ideas, that can agree, and, and more importantly, disagree, that can persuade and provoke. And that's where the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. And I want to thank each of you who has participated, conjoled, uh, driven, stretched us to where we are today and to where we're going. So I want to thank you. I'd also like to thank uh, those of you who know DuPont well and uh, shared your knowledge with Columbia, including not only Shelley Lazarus but, and John Dillon, but Kira Loomis and, and Christy Whitman and others who understand what we're about and where we're going and are always holding that mirror up to make sure we're honest about how to get there. You know, I first heard about Deming very young in my career, and I first started going to Japan and understanding the various principles he espoused and how he came to them. And the amazing thing that strikes me as I go back and read them again is the staying power of his ideas. If he were here today as a young man first publishing his ideas in today's economic and industrial, env industrial environment, they would be just as timely, just as germane and revolutionary as they were in the 1940s and the 1950s. Now, one of his ideas I have grasped onto during my tenure as CEO of DuPont now, it falls under the number principle 14, but that's not what I call it. It's the one that says, put everybody in the company to work to accomplish transformation. Transformation is everyone's job, just not the top of the house. You know, when I became CEO, my goals were to grow the company, create value for shareholders, strengthen the business competitively, and shape and position the company for the future, not unlike anybody who steps into these roles. I knew that to, to succeed, that we would have to lead the company through dramatic change and transformation, and that some of the most difficult work one can undertake as a CEO. You know, the additional challenge was the timing. As Shelley mentioned, I became CEO in January of 2009 in the midst of the global financial crisis. But the interesting part, when I first learned of my opportunity to lead the, lead the com company, the first hour I thought, oh my, couldn't have happened at a worse time. But with every growing day, I came to understood that it couldn't have happened at a better time that this crisis could be a, the catalyst for transformation. That's how we saw it, that's how we understood it, and that's how we, uh, we drove it. 
As a team, we talked about how the world would be different post-global financial crisis, and we weren't quite sure what we meant when we said it. But we had to be ready for what was coming next. And the interesting thing, it wasn't about us in our vacuum. It was about us in a very competitive world, although uncertain world, and how would we emerge stronger. We believed every employee had a role to play. First and foremost, we had to continue to live by our core values, safety and health, environmental stewardship, highest, highest ethical standards, and respect for people. And rather than be prescriptive, do this, don't do that, we proposed a set of behaviors that we must bring to our everyday tasks. And it won't come as a surprise to every, anyone who's familiar with the Deming principles what these are. Accountability, transparency, collaboration, and speed and agility. You know, we came through the financial storm and we accomplished many things along the way. We chose to focus first on what we could control, and that was critical, and it paid off in ways that we're still realizing. We chose to keep the pedal to the metal on research and development. Science is our lifeblood, and that is the power to transform. And at the end of the day, if we did that, I felt we could emerge stronger than our competition and continue to transform DuPont. What makes us unique as a company is our ability to continuously transform the science to meet market opportunities that are ever-changing. Now, it sounds simple, but it's not. But it's what makes our company unlike any other in the world. Our global customers, and I spend a lot of time on the road in countries around the world, they're innovation hungry. They're thought partners. They have issues and opportunities that they want us to help them solve so they can become more successful and we deliver scientific solutions that meet their needs. We also choose to focus on operational excellence, supply chain, value chain, inventory, and transactional excellence. It's very, comp it's very highly competitive out there. So even if we have to have the science, we have to have the cost, the operational discipline, the ability to serve, that goes along with it. And operational excellence is critical during times of change, and that change is occurring daily. So today, I mean, our transformation continues. We're pursuing three strategic priorities where our science is uniquely capable of delivering solution. First, in the agriculture to food value chain, where we're a leader. The second is building on our position in bio-based industrials to establish new transformational businesses based on biotech. And the third is to strengthen and grow as a provider of differentiated, high-value, advanced materials, a historic strength at DuPont. We've spent a lot of time on these areas, understanding in great detail, and are confident that in each of these areas, our science-powered innovation will provide answers to many of the world's most complex issues now and in the future. You know, execution and innovation are not two separate levers. They are connected. Innovation is how we use science to create change, and execution is the enabler that brings that innovation to the marketplace. So the Deming principles, when applied by our teams, make the whole process more effective and the results truly transformative. So I'm humbled to receive this award that carries the Deming name. And I can assure you that all of us at DuPont, we're going to continue to strive for the excellence that that represents. Thank you.